Hello everyone, I greet in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Nathan Salas and today we have a very interesting video to react to by Dr. Murat Winfred Hoffman and he says Islam a rational faith. I believe that we are going to learn a lot in understand from this um video. So if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So guys, before we get on to the video, I'm a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's religion. This is basically for educational purposes. And I believe that at the end of this video, we all are going to learn from this. So guys, without any further ado, let's get on to this video and check this out. Hello and welcome to Matters of Faith. I'm Christiana Bakker. Our topic today, Islam, a rational faith. Many people think religions are irrational. They are opium for the masses and people adhere to religion with blind faith, but without reason. Today, we're going to shed some light on these common prejudices. We look at the primary sources of Islam, the Quran and the Sunnah, the practice of the Prophet, and we look into the history of Islam to understand the roles of reason, debate and knowledge. Our guest today is the very distinguished Dr. Murad Hoffman, a famous former diplomat and ambassador for Germany and author of many prominent books on various different aspects of Islam. For example, Islam the Alternative and Islam 2000. Welcome, Dr. Hoffman. Glad to be here. Um, first of all, could you define the terms rationality, reason and faith? A Muslim cannot get away without faith. Yes. Uh, once you have pronounced the Shahada and you understand what it means, then you can apply your rationality and your reasoning again to the two things which we can use as object of study. One is nature, the cosmos, and you can find God there. And the other is the Quran, the word of God. Yes, which asks us again and again to use our reasoning. Right. Uh, there are 15 places in the Quran where an appeal is made to think, to reflect, to use one's mind. And therefore, uh, I maintain that of the religions I know, Islam is the most rational. Mm -hmm. So you would say definitely Islam is a religion for people who think? Indeed. What about blind faith? Is there such a thing as blind faith in Islam? Um, if you believe without reflecting on why you believe, then your faith might be blind. But I wouldn't belittle such a faith. Because the end result is that somebody who studied philosophy and somebody who is uh, a simple-minded uh, citizen, the two are in the same boat as far as transcendence is concerned. They do not have access without faith. Yes. Now, Islam means submission or devotion to God. How can this submission again, you know, be, be married to the rationality, reasoning? When you know that you are 100% dependent on somebody else, it is not irrational for you to try to have good relations <laughs> with such a person. You will make gifts at Christmas time or other times to such a person. And it is absolutely rational that we should devote some time each day to, communica to communicate with that person <laughs> that for you is all essential. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Now, could you give us some examples from the Islamic tradition where reason and faith uh, is being you know, married or goes together? I think it begins with the lifetime of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam already 
when he lived in a by a religious community that is in Al Madina. And he dictated a constitution which became the first written constitution of the world for a situation which demanded ration rationality to the extreme to make two people who had two different religious, r religions live together peacefully. That was an extremely rational thing. Yeah. <coughs> and the very first one, obviously. Now, within the Islamic tradition, um, one source is reasoning um, uh, and jurisprudence. Jurisprudence and the application of the principles, uh, fiqh and usul fiqh. Um, could you explain this a little bit as well? Um, How scholars have always used reason. Yes. I think the Hadith critique, which had to develop very early, uh, and which reached its peak already in the 8th century, and the Mutasila philosophers, also 8th and 9th century, give great credit to the openness of Islam to, to reasoning. Um, the Muslims themselves applied their critical abilities to judging whether a tradition of the prophet could be or could not be correct. I mean, to deal with something as holy <laughs> as the uh, Hadith literature with rational critique, I think is extraordinary in, human, in terms of human history. Yeah. Um, hadith literature means the, could you explain uh, this? Um, the collections of the sayings of the Prophet, uh, like Al-Bukhari or Muslim or uh, Abu Dawood and, and, and the others. Yeah, his sayings were collected in yes. by many, by different authors, and there's yes. a whole science behind it, even yes. for a saying to be valid um, and yes. acceptable. The yes. chain of transmission has to exactly. be correct, and, and uh, so many conditions have to be met. Yes. Now, um, the scholars uh, in the Islamic uh, history also uh, formulated several different schools of law. Um, Indeed. Could you elaborate a little bit on that? I think we should first of all distinguish between what is called Sharia and Fiqh. Mm -hmm. We should talk about Sharia only when we deal with norms contained in the text of the Quran. Mm -hmm. And anything developing from there in terms of legal systems, that we should call fiqh, and we should not forget that that fiqh is man-made, mm -hmm. is human, mm -hmm. and therefore is not eternal. And the early Muslims developed four different accepted, so there were more, yes. but <clears throat> Islamic history was more or less uh, coined by being exposed to four schools of law. They differed from each other in some cases amazingly much. Uh, some considered something legal that others considered worthy of death penalty <laughs> to, to such an extent, incredible. Yeah. But the Muslims were so conscious that law is a human product from divine sources, human product from divine sources, yes. that differences should be maintained, should be honored. So within the precinct of the Haram in Makkah, mm -hmm. the four schools had their own teachers who simultaneously taught their versions of the law. This is near the Kaaba. 
Yeah, around the Kaaba. Near the house of God, for yeah. anybody who may yeah. not understand yes. those terms. Yes. So there was Hanafi law, mm -hmm. Shafi'i law, Hanbali law, uh, taught simultaneously. Yeah. Extraordinary. Could you give us an example of um, where you made the differentiation between Sharia and Fiqh? Can you give us a practical example of what would be Sharia and what would be Fiqh? Human, what is yeah. perhaps not eternal, and then eternal. Um, in the fifth surah, it says somebody who kills without any justification a human being before God is like somebody who has killed all of mankind. Yeah. Uh, that means that murder is an extraordinary crime and cannot be discussed away. That is the case of Sharia. Yes. And fiqh? Fiqh, um, people later on uh, developed the science of how to support a divorced <laughs> wife, for instance. Yeah. And the different schools of law came to different conclusions of how much and how one should arrive at figuring out uh, the maintenance of a, d a divorced wife. This yeah. is another example. Now, going back to history, um, Muslim knowledge was a bridge between Aristotelian knowledge and Western uh, philosophy. Could you explain this contribution of the Muslims? Well, we take, for instance, uh, Ibn Rushd. Ibn Rushd was a 12th century uh, philosopher who knew Aristotle, but expanded on Aristotle, because Aristotle had no ontology, no teaching on the creation of matter. Uh, um, in contrast to Plato, Aristotle dealt with what he saw without speculating about how it came about. Mm -hmm. So there is no Aristotelian ontology. Mm -hmm. Ibn Rushd replaced that on, against the background of Islamic thinking. So that was so important. Uh, Ibn Rushd published 12 different commentaries on Aristotelian philosophy. And that Thomas Aquinas knew about Aristotle was through the translations made of Ibn Rushd's philosophy in Toledo, into Latin. So there is a direct impact of Islam on European philosophy. There are more examples, of course, of how Muslims influenced uh, European thinking in the Middle Ages. Could you tell us some more? Well, Ibn Sina is an extraordinary case, too. Avicenna, <coughs> he was not only a philosopher, he was a medical doctor. And he was maybe the most important medical mind in human history. Mm. Because <coughs> his textbook on how to heal Kanun, it was called, yes. the law, Kanun, yes was used in Europe for 600 years, from the 12th to the 18th century. Yes, it was the foundation of medicine. Absolutely. Yeah. Or take Ibn Khaldun. Ibn Khaldun did something that nobody else achieved in world history. He created two sciences. Mm -hmm. He is the founder of scientific historiography. Mm -hmm. And he is the founder of sociology. In his world history, he developed 
the idea that human society moves from primitive into refined, into decadent. Mm -hmm. And then it starts anew. Yeah. Um, quite extraordinary. Um, people here don't know that and think that sociology was invented in the 19th century. It's wrong. It was invented in the 15th century wow. by Ibn Khaldun. And Ibn Khaldun was also an, an uh, um, Andalusian, who moved into North Africa and taught also in Tunis mm -hmm. and in Cairo. Mm. Now, could you uh, go on to explain how Muslim thinkers even influenced the Age of Enlightenment in Europe? I mean, did the Europeans <coughs> pick up some of those thoughts? Mm. Which well, ones? That is a pretty sad story because Voltaire, wanted to criticize the Catholic Church for its irrationality, and he abused Islam for that. He wrote a, st uh, a, a drama called Muhammad, in which he criticizes irrationality in religion meant to attack the Catholic Church, but the Muslims had to pay the, pay the price for it. Frederick the Great criticized Voltaire for it. Mm. He wrote him and said, you know better that Islam is not that way, because Frederick the, of the Great of Prussia, he knew about Islam since he had Islamic troops. He had several brigades of Muslims. They were formerly Russian soldiers who were caught and then were integrated into, into the Prussian army. Mm -hmm. But they were Muslims of Tatar background. Right. And he criticized Voltaire. Yeah, yes. he criticized Voltaire. Yes. Lessing did. Um, with his Nathan the Wise. Yes. In Nathan the Wise, they are Jewish, Christian, and Muslim people, but only the Muslims are without fault. Really? Are absolutely ideal. If you read it, you will, you will uh, find that out. It's quite extraordinary. <coughs> or take Goethe. Goethe ran into Islam directly when the Russian troops of Alexander the Great during the Napoleonic Wars came to Weimar and he saw Bashkiri soldiers pray in Weimar and he was impressed. Uh, so when he wrote his West Eastern uh, Divan. Divan, he did so against the background of direct visual uh, experiences he had with Muslims. Mm -hmm. Yes, and would you say it was a brave text because it really, and in many instances, speaks from the perspective of a Muslim? No, because the 18th century was a tolerant century. Right. And it was a century where deism grew, which meant that you left it up to people like Frederick the Great, chacun a son goût. Uh -huh. Each to their own taste. Yes, it was the 19th century and which became materialistic and the 20th which became ideological, where intolerance grew. The 18th was ideal. Thank you very much. This is so fascinating. We'll take a short break now here on Matters of Faith and we shall be right back with more on the Enlightenment and the Islamic contribution in a moment. See you then. Wow, that's a very um, interesting um, explanation by Hoffman. I think uh, I really like in a sense how he explained this um, Islam as a rational um, faith. He talked about in a sense different faith 
from the Quran, the Hadith of the Prophet, and how the Sharia was formed, and then some of the things you understand that the people you understand do, which he called it is it the fiqh or something like that? Like, I think a way of maybe the people decide that no, look, let's do things you understand this way and all that. So, and he actually make reference to Quran chapter 5 that was talking about taking maybe the soul or a life of human without any justification is just like killing the entire humanity and saying so many things and how the action of someone you understand the muslim have to pay the price in the process of trying to write something to what to discredit the catholic church but then at the end of the day the catholic have to take the fall and that's why i see i have always says that at some point i think that the Muslims supposed to be able to maybe separate themselves from some of the religious values and some of these political or should I say personal interests so that they can be able to tackle all these things. Else otherwise, you see, one person can do something, right? Maybe for his own personal reason, but then the whole religion end up paying the price for it. And that's what's happening as during that 9-11, why? The interest of Osama bin Laden end up affecting every Muslim and that resulted to all this uh, Islamophobia and all those things, you know, the hostility that we have been, you understand, do veg on the Muslims and everyone, you understand, that is a Muslim tend to suffer, you understand, for it. And up till today, let me not say, okay, even though now it has kind of, the tension have kind of reduced through what, education, dialogue, and all that. But then, all the same, like, this video is actually very informative. It kind of exposed me to some certain things that has happened, you understand, before. And then we could see even the influence of Islam, even in our society. We could look at it even in medicine and then we we'll even look at him as the father of psychologists about some of the things that he does and how it was even taught from the 12th century to the 18th century like you see those kind of information not to even talk about algebra and all that like you realize that islam have kind of um shall i say contribute you understand to the development of this very 21st um century but then if like imagine we are not listening to this kind of videos how are we going to know about all these things so that makes this channel in a sense something that we should take it very seriously because i'll be bringing out some informative you understand video for all of us to kind of deliberate on it and maybe probably some of the things that we are not mentioned at the course of the video you can actually um put it at the comment section so that we all learn from one another right probably there might be something that you want to add up to this video just put it at the comment section and then i'm going to check it out even though this video have part two of it so this is the first segment and then we're going to check out the second um segment and then we can go be able to what to conclude on it but then i know that a lot of you have you know a lot of people who have contributed to the development of the world at large and then therefore you can just drop me the link of such videos so that we can all i'll actually watch it and then maybe probably say my own remark and then you can also contribute to it and god is going to bless you trust me both the christian the muslim the hindu and everyone we are all learning you understand from this um video and if you're a hindu you have a particular scholar you want me to check out his video you can all drop it at the comment section same thing applicable to the christian to the muslim and then to the jew okay a very interesting video and i hope that we tend to enjoy this so this is the end of my video if you like my reaction if you like share and subscribe and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys you remain blessed and i see you in my next video bye bye